Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us, and, because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. But test everything. 
Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who called you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord according to John. Glory to you, Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. But this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, well, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Now this took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Psalm 126 is the only psalm, besides Psalm 23, King James Version, 
that I've ever even sort of committed to memory, which is nothing to brag about, especially since my memory gets more unreliable with every birthday. But there's a reason I can still remember Psalm 126. Exactly 20 years ago, I was in my last year of seminary, and today's lessons for the third Sunday of Advent were used for the last celebration of Holy Eucharist before everyone left for Christmas break. My assignment for that service was to chant Psalm 126 with the partner. Neither of us wanted to do it. We aren't good singers. We barely had the courage to chant in front of our class, much less the whole seminary. To make matters worse, it was part of our grade in liturgics. Even though the university choir director, who was amazing, worked directly with the two of us, she even recorded our parts on cassette tapes in the keys that each of our voices could manage so that we could practice. And we did practice, but it didn't go well. I had the first verse, and to this day, I think I got all the notes in the first half of of the tone right. But she missed some notes on the next verse, and I missed some on the one after that. And by the time we tried to chant verse 7 together, we had driven that psalm in a ditch and flipped it twice over. A train wreck if there ever was one. But I remember those ancient words that my friend and I struggled verse by verse to give voice to together. Isn't it interesting how we remember the things we struggle through and the easy stuff in life just floats into the recesses of our subconscious like a stick floats downstream. Psalm 126 is a great psalm to remember. Our Jewish brothers and sisters recite it every Sabbath just before the last table prayers. It's a psalm of hope set against the backdrop of the Babylonian exile. Hope is always future-oriented, but in the mind of the psalmist, the future hope of Israel is deeply rooted in the past. It's because the Lord has done great things for us, writes the psalmist, that our hope in the Lord is not in vain. When we were suffering in Egypt, the Lord heard our cries and sent the prophet Moses to lead us to freedom. When we were in the wilderness with Moses for 40 years, the Lord provided for us, gave us manna to eat. When we complained of that, the Lord sent quails to us, and through Moses we drank water from a rock. And when they made it to the edge of the land the Lord promised to their ancestors, Moses did not let them forget how the Lord provided for them in the wilderness all those years. Their clothes didn't fall off their backs in tatters, he reminded them, and their feet didn't swell either. If God loved us enough to do good things for us in the past, then God loves us enough to do good things for us in the future. This hope that the psalmist conveys in the psalm is the kind of hope that would say, we know God will do good for us in the future because God has done good for us in the past. That means God is working for the good for us now in the present whether we can see it or not. The one who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps, writes the psalmist in Psalm 121. God's people, Israel, know that God is as faithful to them now as God was faithful to their ancestors and will be to their descendants for as long as the earth endures. Israel's hope has an eternal quality because their hope is in the one who was and is and ever shall be. It is the same hope the prophet Isaiah speaks of when he brings good news to the oppressed, the downtrodden, suffering and afflicted. It's the same hope that is in John the Baptist. As Father Ken said last week, the wilderness represents a place of struggle and hardship. John's presence in the wilderness is a sign that the Lord is at work right now in the struggles God's people are enduring. John makes his home there, preaches repentance and baptizes repentant sinners as a sign of forgiveness to prepare them for this future hope in God's promised Messiah 
so they will be able to receive God's Messiah with clean hearts. So the Pharisees sent some priests and Levites out to the wilderness to find John and inquire about why he was there doing what he was doing. To their questions about who he is, he said he is not the Messiah, nor is he Elijah, nor the prophet like Moses. John was clear about who he was and who he was not. And if he didn't know that before he got there, the wilderness helped him to know. That happens in struggles, hardships, and temptations. We learn who we are and what we're made of. That's important to our lives. John the Evangelist, who is telling these things about John the Baptist, said he was sent by God to be a witness to the light that was coming into the world to enlighten all nations. But when asked, John the Baptist said, Oh, I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, like the prophet Isaiah said, making the path straight for the one who is coming after me. And that one is among you now, only you don't know him. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. You see, true to form, the future hope that Israel was watching for, the good things they expected to come with God's Messiah, because God had done good things for them in the past, were springing up in the present because Jesus had already come among them. They just didn't know him yet. Well, 2020 has been a wilderness year, hasn't it? Struggles and hardships everywhere you look, one train wreck after another. You think the news can't get any worse and then lo and behold, it does. In this wilderness year, I hear the word hope a lot. I speak the word hope a lot too. Some people put their hope in a vaccine for the virus. Some put their hope on January 20th, the inauguration of a new president. Some put their hope as well as their heart, their time and their money into movements to address all the social ills plaguing us now. Movements to dismantle racism, lift up the poor, to put an end to the multifaceted discrimination, irresponsible wasting of the earth's resources and gun violence. And some put their hope in a sort of returning, returning to the way things were before the bottom fell out last March. A return to something familiar, normal to us, and easy. Everything has gotten so much harder. But we can't really return to the way things were because we've been and are being changed in the wilderness. We're learning things about ourselves as a people, as a nation, and as a church. Our struggles are not the same, but we are all struggling together, and we are learning things that we will never forget. For as long as we're still in the wilderness, we church folk, followers of Jesus, get to be witnesses like John the Baptist that stand up in the wilderness and point to the one who was, is now, and ever shall be the light to enlighten the nations of the world. The one true God that was the future hope of God's people long ago, the one who came to us as a baby and grew into our Lord, who is with us now, whether or not we are aware of him, and the one who is yet to come, is our best hope. It's an eternal hope in an eternal God who loved us enough to do good things for us before, loves us just as much now, and will love us through this wilderness and beyond. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our 
salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate through the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God, the source of all light and life. Send your spirit upon the church for the declaration of the gospel to all nations. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, the clergy of this church, and for all who serve God in the church. Give to your people the prophetic voice that brings knowledge of salvation through Jesus Christ. Make straight the crooked places of the world and lead the nations into the way of peace. We pray for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Asa, our governor, and Doug, our mayor, Grant the transitions of power leading into the new term of office be peaceful and productive. We pray for all national, state, and local leaders to make wise decisions as they lead us through the pandemic. Reveal your glory so that all people shall see it and become your own. Bless us with your presence in our families and friendships. We give you thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays, especially Chloe Campbell, Rebecca Pugh, Braden Lee, Gina Mitchell, and Melon Burlingame, and for those celebrating anniversaries. We lift up to you those families who are expecting children, especially the George and the Ritter families. We ask for your protection for those currently in military service especially Drake, Asa, Lane, and Dell. Give us patience in all our dealings with others. Where relationships are hurt or broken, grant healing and renewal. May the present comfort of your holy word and the hope of future glory bring strength to those who suffer. We pray especially for Lisa, Keith, Maureen, Michael, Robert, Randy, Al, Lee, Virginia, Dan, Al, Daniel, Kay, Billy, Stephen, Diane, Jana, JT, Sophie Owie, Terry, Edward, W.C., Beverly, Jane, Megan, Sana, Justin, Lindsay, William, Teresa, Lillian, Debbie, Bill, Julie, Carol, Edward, Cherry, Chelsea, the McDonald family, Wilma, Paula, Bailey, Tina, C.J., the residents and staff at Brookstone Assisted Living Center, and all those affected by COVID-19. Give them relief through the power of Christ, healing all their ills, and making all things new. We ask you to guide, protect, 
and bless all those who tend to the sick and to the dying. Grant that the souls of the departed may share the joy of all who have witnessed to the message of salvation. We give you thanks for those who have gone before to prepare the way for us, the way of peace. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor and sisters as us. We are truly sorry, and we will not live again. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Good morning. Um, thank you once again for worshiping with us via our YouTube channel today. We thank you for your continued offerings to the church. It is not too late to make a financial commitment to the church for uh, 2021. If you have not done so, you can just go back, access a pledge card right to our website and uh, make it there, which, for which we'd be grateful. I want to remind you of Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve services. We will, of course, have a virtual service like we always do every Sunday here in the church that you will be able to access on Christmas Eve. But also at 7 o'clock, we're going to do a, a little service in the parking lot of Lessons and Carols. Um, I'll send out more details about that and how we will all be safe as we do that together uh, later on this week. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
with you? And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your sins into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the rise of the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at this second advent be rewarded with unending life. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
depart in peace to await the coming of the Lord. Thanks be to God.